Toyo C. Ogunshe is the new head of news, BBC World Service London. She's a Mandela Washington Fellow, two-time CNN African Journalist of the Year, and Nigeria's most decorated journalist with over 35 professional awards. Please welcome this exceptional, international, and PhD candidate of the University of Leicester, UK. Miss Toyo C. Ogusha here to the podium. She's our guest speaker at the 2022 Celestial Showers Convention, 10 times better, 4.0 edition. Hallelujah. Thank you. I'm honored to be in your presence again this afternoon. And I don't know about you, but I've just spent the best time of my 2022 this afternoon. And I mean every word I say. This is my best time so far this year. I want to thank you for the excellence in this room this afternoon. Mrs. Katuma, thank you very much, ma'am. I was telling Daddy Cage, I said, I think we need to go home. I don't think there's anything more to say this afternoon. It's like when you've had pounded yam and a goosey soup for lunch. What else do you want to eat? Thank you very much for inspiring me and all of us in this room this afternoon. I listened to you and I said to myself, I need to re-examine my goals for the year. I understood that set my goals too low. I need to bring back those gold bars and polish them properly. I listen to you speak, I admire your courage, your, your confidence. I don't know, I mean, the ladies in this room, how did you feel? There's something powerful about her. Thank you for inspiring us. You have no idea what you've done for me this afternoon. You have no idea how you've made me think about the things I want to do, and I said, no, Toyo, say, wake up. Wake up. You're sleeping. Wake up. Thank you very much, ma'am. Sister Inka, I pray that you sing before kings and queens, rulers of the world. I pray that your excellence will not be eaten in a dark room. I pray that the people will know what it means to hear an angelic voice like yours will hear you. Doors will open for you, Amen. paths will open for you, Amen. and you'll fulfill your destiny in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, daddies, mommies, I don't know what else to say. Because Mrs. Katuma said everything. What else? What else? And while she was speaking, I began to rewrite what I wanted to talk to you about this afternoon. But before I start, I'm going to read some of my favorite scriptures to you. The first one being Philippians 4 verse 13. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I don't know about you, but that verse greatly comforts me. And Romans 8 verse 28. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to purpose there's another favorite verse of mine I love it so much Lamentations 3 verses 22 to 23 the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases his mercies never come to an end they are new every morning great is your faithfulness and the last one, I could spend so many hours just listening to the scriptures and meditating on them. The last one, Romans 8 verse 31. What then shall you say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? And as soothing and as comforting the scriptures are, they carry deep meanings. And while Mrs. Katuma was speaking, I said I began to rewrite what I wanted to talk about. And the first thing that came to my mind was on the journey of excellence, there are two things that have worked for me. Ac 
accepting myself and accepting God. And when I say accept yourself, what do I mean? It's not so much about this is why I am, take me it that way or leave me. I, I find that very silly when people say this is why I am, I can't change. You can change for better. You can not change for better. But when I say accept yourself, I mean this is my height. I will never be taller than this. It's, it's my height. I would never be able to sing like Sister Yinka. There's no point aiming to sing like her. It's not going to work. No matter how much I try, I just don't have that gift. The depth of knowledge that Mrs. Katuma has from banking to law, energy, oil and gas, same as energy, power, politics, administration, diplomacy. Maybe I can read about it. Or report it. But that's not who I am. And I find that most of the time, one of the biggest logs in the wheel of excellence is when we don't accept ourselves. We want to be like other people. You are you and there's no other person like you. And there's something in you that the next person does not have. When you spend time concentrating on the excellence of other people, you lose track of your own excellence. When you spend time focusing on the strength of other people, you can imagine me going home and thinking about, oh my God, how I wish I can sing like Sister Inka, or how I wish I can sing. Really? I have stories to write. I should be wishing to write my stories better rather than focusing on our strengths. And so I want us to throw that comparison out of the window this afternoon. And I want us to accept ourselves, accept our weaknesses with the aim of making, getting better and accepting our strengths. If you are a stammerer, there's very little you can do about it. I mean, you could go for you know, classes to improve yourself, but accept yourself. I stammer and that is my strength. Have you ever seen a stammerer that nobody is listening to? Because the first thing that captivates you is, why is this person stammering? So they often captivate people for the first few minutes because people are saying, why is this person, you know, struggling to speak? And that's an advantage. The fact that you have the attention of people is something you need to convert to your strength. But that's just by the side. I want you to throw away this afternoon everything that stands in the way of you accepting yourself. Accepting your roots, accepting your family, accepting your country. You don't want to be like that other country. I'm not going to mention them, the name of the country that blames Nigeria for all their woes. You know our neighbors. You know, when they lose, oh, it's the Nigerians, it's the Nigerians, it's the Nigerians. But you know what I say all the time? There's so many beautiful things about that country. And it boils down to acceptance of self, acceptance of my root, acceptance of my family. I hear people saying things like, I wish I was Dangote's child. Really? One day, I was in the room where Dangote was speaking. And he said, one of the best things God has done for me is not giving me a son. He said, because if God had given me a son, I would have had big problems because he might have been causing problems for me all over the world. It would open Dangote America, Dangote Italy. It would likely be mixed up with drugs, all kinds of scandals. But look at my girls, they're all very well behaved. It's a big blessing. Hallelujah. Acceptance of your circumstances, acceptance of yourself, acceptance of your destiny, finding the blessing in your circumstances and doing better with it. He's the richest man in Africa. You could say, oh, I'm not satisfied, I want a son. As, I mean, people who don't even have one-tenth of what he has, you know, say or do. But this is Africa's richest man saying, thank God he gave me only girls. 
Thank God my girls are making me proud. And one of the best things God has done for me is not giving me a son. So what is that thing that you're not accepting about yourself this afternoon? What is that thing about Nigeria that you're not accepting that after this afternoon? There's so many things not right in our country. There's no doubt about it. But you need to see the force that Nigeria is when you step out of Nigeria. People are literally afraid of us. People are intimidated by us. To the point that sometimes it becomes, you know, I don't know what to call it, maybe hatred or dislike. You hear the Nigerians are here. They are so loud. They think they know everything. Look at them. What is it? Always wanting to be the first. And it is true. We always want to be the best. We always want to come first. And that is the Nigerian spirit. That is the African spirit. So while you throw your country away, there are so many people who admire your country. In every class I've been outside the country, most Africans admire Nigeria. Most world people admire Nigeria for our strength, for our resilience, which is the next thing I want to talk about. And Mrs. Katuma spoke about it in her speech, the power of resilience. You know what? You can be the most hardworking person in the world. You can be the most gifted person in the world. You can be the most skilled person in the world. You can be the most positive person in the world. What other, what other attributes can I think about this afternoon? If you do not have resilience, you cannot be excellent. Those gifts will just go away. And what do I mean by resilience? My brothers and sisters, the truth is life is hard, very hard, extremely hard. Every step of the way, there's an ordeal waiting for you. It has nothing to do with how much you have. It has nothing to do with how educated you are. It has nothing to do with whether you were given better in Brazil or wherever. These ordeals are on the way. And you can't escape it. And you know what makes those odors really painful? Sometimes these odors are from your inner circle. And you know what I've seen in my little time on earth? I've seen really brilliant people give up. I've seen exceptional people give up. Why? Because of the absence of what my mother calls backbone. You cannot be excellent if you don't have backbone. And not biscuit backbone. Backbone made of metal. Unbreakable. You know, the type they will throw on the floor, it will bend. You will weld it back together and keep moving. We've listened to our guest speaker speak glowingly about our career. I can tell you she can spend... Another two hours speaking about the odors she's had to face. All you see is the glory. You don't know our story. And that is the difference between better and best resilience. Even when everything is crumbling around you, you are standing. Even when you are dying, you are standing. And I can speak all afternoon about resilience. I'll give you a personal example. I'm moving on to a new job, by God's grace, as Daddy said. But do you know that it was odds that pushed me to this job? It had, well, as far as I'm concerned, very little to do with, you know, maybe I can write, or I know my job well. No! It was the odds on the way. And what were these odds? No perfect working environment. And on the path to excellence, it doesn't matter. Even if I leave my current organization today and I go to another one, there's another order waiting for me. It's how it is. So it's either you go into the gym of resilience and build your backbone, or you forget about it. And so I came back. Where am I going? And one day, one of my bosses said to me, he said, see, I'm inspired by your resilience and your de determination. Even in the face of adversity, you don't back down. Wow. And I said, you know, it's not that. 
easy. Sometimes it's light. I just put up a straight face. It doesn't matter. The most important thing is you don't quit. You don't quit when things are difficult. You don't quit when everybody is standing against you because that is exactly what they want you to do. To quit, you quit on your own terms. They introduced a sponsorship scheme. What is a sponsorship scheme? It's where a top director picks a senior manager to mentor. And so they went to him and said, oh, we, we're doing this sponsoring scheme. Sponsoring scheme. It's a one-year scheme. You pick the senior manager. You sponsor him or her. The senior manager goes with the director to all Israel meetings. It's like a mentorship thing, but it's a lot higher level. It's a level higher, rather, than mentorship. Because at the end of the sponsorship scheme, the senior manager must be better than you met him or her. So they said, so who do you want to sponsor? I said, I'll sponsor Toyo, so she's in Nigeria. That's the person I want to sponsor for one year. And they said, why do you want to sponsor her? He said, she does not back down. That is what we need. She does not back down. And, and I'll tell you something. This is slightly different from being unnecessarily stubborn. There are two different things. This is not about you're doing wrong and you insist on being wrong. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when everything is crumbling. You've put in money into your business and you can't find, you know, the, you, you can't find your investment. The economy isn't working. Your, the, the, the guys that said they were going to give you some money to, to support your capital are failing. What do you do? Do you quit? They are more quitters than winners. And that's why the road to excellence is very tough. And so I started this sponsorship scheme six months ago. And during the process, this, my boss, got a promotion in the UK. And I was given the task to reorganize the old UK and Europe operations. And then he looked at the top. And he said, how come we don't have an African at the top? How come, more importantly, there's no female African at the top? We're going to create a role for diversity. It's the first step, but we need to start from somewhere. And that person must come from Africa. Yes, we have Africans in the UK, but those ones are not, they don't have the African spice. We want the one that has the African spice. Cooked, buttered, jollof rice spice from Africa. And she must be a woman. That's the person we need at the top. So I went for this interview. And to the glory of God, I got the job. And I live in a few days. But why do I tell you the story? It was born in a place of resilience. It was born in a place of adversity. Forget the accolades. Young people in this room, forget the accolades. A lot of pain goes into the accolades. A lot of tears go into the accolade. And it's not a one-off because just when you think you have overcome a particular hurdle, there's a bigger one waiting in front of you. And so I don't know the type of backbone you have this afternoon whether it's made of plastic, wood, but you need to build your backbone. You need to go to the gym and tell yourself that I will not give up. How else can we be excellent? Embracing failure is another. I failed many times. You know, I started my PhD a few years ago. I haven't finished. And my supervisor is tired of me. And she says, yes, you know, you know, you don't know you don't have to finish this PhD. You can just, you know, I'm tired of reminding you that you need to finish your PhD. What's your problem? And I'll give excuses and excuses. I haven't finished, but I'm going to finish this year. Because it's one of those gold bars I need to polish. There are rooms... I need that PhD to go into. Let me give you an example of what that failure cost me. While I was preparing for my visa, my work visa, there are two compulsory processes in doing a work visa. It's either you write the IELTS, which we all know, or you get the ECTIS certificate. What is ECTIS? ECTIS is a UK examining body where you submit all your certificates, your transcript, everything. They examine it and give you a certificate saying that your 
the, your, your, the certificates from your own country are good enough, your English is great, and you don't need to write IELTS. You know how difficult it is to get transcripts in this country. So I had a deadline to submit all my transcripts on the ECTIS website. I was running from school to school, calling there, my master's school, my first degree, my PGD. It was very close to Christmas. Everybody was just, you know, doing whatever they liked. And then my office immigration lawyer called me and said, seriously, you said you are studying for a PhD. Have you finished? Because if you finish that PhD, you don't need ECTIS. You don't need anything. And I said, I haven't finished. She said, well, then you have to go and get ECTIS. And you know, I looked at myself in the mirror. I said, look at yourself. Look at yourself. If you had finished this thing, when you should have finished it, you won't be running around like a headless chicken looking for transcripts all over the place. It may look very little to you, but I went through intense stress and I paid the price for not finishing that PhD because it took me six weeks to get the transcript when you could have just taken a phone call if I'd finished my PhD. You have to do what you have to do and you have to keep getting better at it. So you'd accept failure, but as Mrs. Katuma said, you will not give up very quickly and very importantly and i rate it next to perseverance is ethics ethics you cannot achieve, you cannot achieve excellence if you don't have ethics and I'm not going to define it. I want you to look inwards and ask yourself, what are my principles? When people say Toyosi, what does Toyosi stand for? I'm yet to meet an excellent person who doesn't have a set of principles. It has never happened. And you see, it really doesn't matter what you think about them. But when you hear their name, people will say, oh, that person, she doesn't come late for meetings. That person, he doesn't do that. They have a set of values. They have a set of principles. They stick by it. They are consistent with it. And it has defined them. Nobody does business with fraudulent people. Nobody does business with unethical people. Nobody does business. And when I mean business, I mean whatever business. Whatever business. Even ministry business. Even ministry business. Because the biggest currency in the world of excellence is trust. Trust. Do people trust you? You can be the most brilliant person in your organization. Do they trust you? And you know, people tell me things like, I've worked in this organization for 15 years. Nobody's promoting me. I've done amazing things. Nobody recognizes my talent. Do they trust you. These companies have been built for decades. These institutions have been built for centuries. They're not going to give it to somebody who's going to erode everything they fought for. How trustworthy are you? With finances? With your mouth? With your mouth, how trustworthy are you? Are you somebody that can keep organizational secrets? Are you a loose mouth? Are you a gossip? I'm sorry, there's no excellence on that path. Nobody rewards, nobody regards anybody who is not trustworthy. And you can say, oh, but I don't steal. I don't kill anybody. I don't, I don't, I don't. No. What are your values? And is your currency the currency of trust? Because when people can trust you, they will give you responsibilities, but more importantly, they will give you risk. Anybody can take responsibility, but very few people can take risk. And what makes you able, what enables people to trust you with, to, to give you risk, is because they trust you. That you know what? No matter how bad it gets, I trust that this person will do the right thing. Trust. Trust. Can the people in your circle trust you? When your 
boss tells you something to promote a loose mouth to a senior position, I'm not going to do that. It doesn't matter how brilliant you are. It doesn't matter what you know. It doesn't matter if you are bringing the best results. I don't care because I don't trust you. And so you'll find that I'll pick somebody who is maybe not even as brilliant as you are, who isn't even bringing as much results because I trust the person. I can go to bed, close my eyes, and know that nothing will happen. Are you trustworthy? Because, again, no matter how skilled you are, no matter how brilliant you are, no matter how talented you are, if you do not have that currency of trust in your wallet, it never gets depleted. Never gets depleted. The people that really matter. You know, people say things like, oh, who are the, who are the, who are the influencers around you? Who are the people that can help you? You just be a trustworthy person. They'll find you. They'll find you. You don't need to find them. And that's why you find that excellence will always be in, this, in the company of excellence. You know why? Excellence always finds itself. Trust. Let me say something. Let me take a little break. When you sell your brother, the buyer will not trust you. When you sell your sister, the buyer will not trust you. I know people, multi-billionaires, who would take investment risks just because of the name of somebody and say, is it X, Y, Z? Give her five billion. She'll give me my money back. I trust her. How many opportunities have we lost because of our character? Because see, you can go to the best business school. You can do all this online. You know, there's so many online things they do these days. You know, you can come to the veil and sit here from morning till night. If you do not have a good character, I'm really sorry. And you have to self-examine yourself. And be, and be true to yourself. I tell people all the time, you can lie to me, I don't lie to myself. I look at myself in the mirror every day and I say, this is my weakness, I need to work on it. So without anybody prompting you this afternoon, my brothers and sisters, I want you to take a good look into the mirror and ask yourself, what are my flaws? Are you somebody who's been known to be untrustworthy? It's never too late. You can begin. You know, there are, people that, yeah, there are people around us that you say things like, ah, what happened to her? She has changed, though. What happened to him? He has changed, though. I want you to spend some time this afternoon looking at your character and asking yourself, what is it about me that is stopping my excellence? What is it about me that is not letting people that, you know, the circle I want to belong, what is it about me that is chasing them away. But more importantly, you can also pray about it. God, show me the secret of my life. God, show me what is wrong with me. I want to see it so I can work on it. Lastly, and I think I've said it here before, you need to take responsibility for yourself. You can't, you can't give that responsibility to anyone. And I say this particularly because of our African setting, African culture, Nigerian you know, whatever, where you think somebody is responsible for you. Maybe it's your father, your mother, your uncle, one godfather, and yet things like, oh, my uncle said he was going to do this, but he did not do this. My auntie said she was going to do this, and she did not do that. I hear it all the time. And while what makes us really strong is our community, the African community, the brother, sister, everybody's everybody's family, brilliant. But you do not give the responsibility of your life to anybody to manage for you. You take sole responsibility for yourself. You are the captain of your ship and you ask God for guidance. There will be people around you you can talk to. Absolutely. You can go to all the mentorship classes. You can. That's fine. That's all fine and good. But don't hand over your purpose to anyone. Don't hand over your destiny to anyone. Don't And over disappointments break the soul. Disappointments sometimes make people give up early. And you know, one of the biggest causes of disappointment is when we lean on people too much. Humans are failed and programmed to fail. 
that's how it is we are programmed to fail one another it has nothing to do with being good or bad it's just human nature to fail and so when you rely on people too much and they fail you i've seen some people they've not recovered from it emotional trauma severe heartbreak and it makes them say you know what i don't want to do anything in life again let me just go and be doing my little job i don't want to have anything to do with people i know people like that and they get content with their little life because of severe emotional trauma and i'm not saying that i mean daddy is here i talk to him all the time i have people in my circle i talk to around the clock i'm chatting with my girls two four seven but I don't give my life to anybody to manage for me. And you shouldn't. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. You should be the captain of your life. You should be one steering your sheep and saying, this year I'm going to do this. Yes, I'm going to ask for advice from Mrs. Katuma. I'm going to ask advice from Daddy Cage. I'm going to pray about it. But at the end of the day, you make the decisions of your life for yourself. And on that note, I'd like to close. But back to my most important question of the day. What is it about your character that is stopping you from being excellent? And we can relate it to the Nigerian, you know, factor. Where people say things like, oh, other countries will say, oh, Nigerians, oh my God, they are too fraudulent. Character problems. Because so many Nigerians have defrauded them. So many Nigerians do yahoo yahoo. It is what we know. And because of that perception of not being reliable, it tends the hard work, creativity, perseverance of young Nigerians like yourself and myself. And while we may have that at the center and in the country, we can put that aside for a minute because if one and each of us decide to work on our character, then the country will be a better place. Because the country is made up of me and you. It's not made up of, you know, ghosts or, you know. It's me and you that make up Nigeria. We are Nigeria. So if each day you wake up in the morning and you ask yourself, what is it about my character that is stopping me from being excellent? You can, go, again, I repeat it, go to all the schools in the world. Get all the certifications you can. Make all the money whichever way you can. But you see this thing about excellent? A good character is critical. What is your currency? Do people trust you? And it starts from your family. Do, do your, does your sister know that if she tells you something, then somebody else won't hear? How trustworthy are you? I pray that God will help us. I pray that more importantly, we'll have the courage to look at ourselves in the mirror, tell ourselves the truth, and I will have the courage to begin the work. It's never too late. It is never too late. Forget the past. You can wake up every morning and say, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Thank you.